Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Emily Olin. I am the Director of Marketing and Communications for the Academy Software Foundation. Um, and I'm here to tell you about the use of open source software in the motion picture industry. So. Okay, well, we're gonna keep going. Apparently there's still issues with the video, but it is available on our website. It's our sizzle reel that shows a bunch of um, open source within motion pictures. So um, today I'm gonna kind of take you through what the history is of the foundation, why it was formed, a little overview of our projects in the community and how you can get involved. So um, open source software has a long history within the motion picture industry, at least 15 years. So within the Linux Foundation, while there are a lot of verticals where open source software is completely new, like for example, automotive is just getting into it. Um, motion picture industry has been using open source for a really long time. And it's the backbone for a lot of the software that they create, especially for visual effects and for animation. So about um, a couple of years ago, so the foundation launched in 2018 and it was based on a two year investigation that the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, their science and tech council did into the use of open source software across the industry. And what they found was that 80% of the industry was using open source software, especially for animation and for visual effects. But this widespread use had led to some challenges that were inhibiting um, Sorry about that. Looks like we were having some audio and technical difficulties. Um, I realized that it was a little bit choppy audio going in and out. So I'm going to back up a few slides. Um, just to recap, the foundation was launched in 2018. Um, after the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, their Science and Technology Council did a two-year investigation into the use of open source software across the industry. And what they found was that 80% of the industry was using open source, especially for animation and for visual effects. But this widespread use had caused a lot of challenges and they needed to address them in order to have a healthy ecosystem going forward. And these were things like very different governance and licensing models, different from project to project, studio to studio, uh, siloed development, and also things like when a project maintainer would leave a company or leave a project, the projects would then go stagnant for a while. So thus, they brought in Linux Foundation and formed the Academy Software Foundation. So it's a neutral forum for open source software for motion picture and broader media. Um, especially for animation and visual effects. Um, it's a place for cross-project, cross-studio collaboration, um, a lot of which was difficult before without having a neutral party to manage it. And so some of our goals you can see, especially are around continuous integration um, and our build infrastructure creating a clear path for participation to make it easier for people to get involved, especially through like consistent licensing um, and, and through CLAs. And then new for this year are also, we're working at creating more working groups and exploring new projects and larger projects. And also a big focus is on diversity and inclusion and, and raising the profile of software engineers in the industry because they're often described as kind of the unsung heroes of the industry. Um, so here's kind of our membership. And over the past two years, our membership has pretty close to doubled. Um, and we have achieved a lot of the goals you saw on the last screen. You know, and um, we actually, within our first year, hit one million in revenue. So like most open source projects, we, um, our governance model includes our governing board which is responsible for a lot of the budget decisions, um, the high level strategy, uh, things like that. At the heart of the foundation is our TAC. So um, all of the members have representatives and we also have some industry associates as part of it. So our technical advisory council, um, they make a lot of the technical decisions. Um, they facilitate a lot of that cross project collaboration 
and they're responsible for voting on and approving new projects that come in and working groups that are formed. And they also identify like if there are resource gaps or things that are needed. And then underneath the TAC, all of our projects operate very independently and they each have their own technical steering committee, which is made up of members from many different companies. Um, and they have their own communities, so they have their own roadmaps, but they kind of report in underneath the TAC. And then all of them share a continuous uh, integration platform. In addition to that, we have our working groups, which also report up to the TAC. So we've got our continuous integration working group. Um, new this year, we've launched several working groups. So our USD working group, and USD is a project that's um, hosted by Pixar. And so that working group is really looking at how do we support the project and help with a lot of like the incoming questions um, and channels like that. Uh, our Python 3 working group that is helping to kind of ease the transition from Python 2 to Python 3 for a lot of our projects. And then new actually launched um, this past month is our diversity and inclusion working group. So our diversity and inclusion working group, which is our next one. Um, diversity is an issue obviously across everywhere and it is really bad within um, visual effects and animation and even kind of something that needs to be addressed even more so within open source communities. And while our projects have a code of conduct and they, we all do our best to be inclusive and diverse, um, there's a gap missing in terms of how do we get that people more into the project and more into open source and aware of it and level the playing field. Um, so that's what you know, the diversity and inclusion working group is aiming to do. We had our first kickoff meeting last month. We had about 40 attendees, um, you know, people joining from Apple, DreamWorks, Imageworks, uh, Disney, DNEG. You know, there's a lot of passion for it and a lot of excitement, and it's a group that I think we'll be able to get a lot done. Um, so right now we're still trying to hammer out what are the goals of the group and how we want to tackle them. Um, it looks like it's, we're probably going to have a big focus on mentorship and also, you know, how do we engage university and high school students to kind of bring them into visual effects and animation and especially open source software. And so, and this group is, you know, open to anybody. So please feel free if there's any interest, feel free to join. And you can sign up. Um, you can read more in, on ASWF.io slash diversity inclusion, um, and there's a link on there also as well to sign up for the mailing list. Um, late last year, we also published our Academy Software Foundation landscape. You may know a lot of the other LF projects have similar landscapes, so this is based off of the one by CNCF. Um, and there used to be one that lived at, I think it was opensourcevfx.com or .org, um, so we've kind of transitioned this to become the landscape, um, trying to build it out and get a lot of the projects to submit. Now our project. Um, so the first project that we adopted was OpenVDB, um, and it was also our first project to graduate to adopted status. So it was developed by DreamWorks, and it's a C++ library for volumetric representations, so um, things like ice, fire, water, liquids, things like that. It's been used on, you know, movies um, like How to Train Your Dragon. Crude, uh, Boss Baby, Trolls, um, a lot of different films mm -hmm. like that. Anything where there's a lot of volume, essentially. Um, the project has seen a lot of growth. They've had three code releases over the past year, and they're actually going to have a big, um, a lot of new technical features coming up this summer. Um, so whereas this was originally a DreamWorks project, they've got a lot more renewed interest and a lot more contributors from Autodesk, NVIDIA, SideFX, DMEG, um, and this is a you know a fairly well known project within the foundation within the industry, um, and it actually won an Academy Technical Achievement Award, which is the Academy of Motion Pictures Arts and Sciences gives out science science tech awards essentially, and so they won that, and it's like the Academy Awards for Visual Effects Animation and Technology. The second project that we adopted was Open Color IO. So they joined um, in the beginning of 2019, and that was developed by Sony Pictures Imageworks. Um, and it provides a, like a color management solution. So 
It ensures that your colors look the same across many different applications um, and in different environments, because that's essential when you're creating a movie. Um, and so it's very widely adopted, um, and it's used across most studios and within vendors. Uh, it's been on, used on movies like Spider-Man, Men in Black, uh, Jumanji, First Man, Avengers, um, pretty much most image works movies. Um, they have grown a lot as well since joining the foundation. They um, have a lot more contributors. They support the ACES, which is the Academy Color Encoding System, and they now have a rep on the OCIO TSC that also is for ACES. So there's a lot more collaboration between the two groups, which is great. Um, and then this was a project that when actually the original developer left the project, it was stagnant for a while until maybe a year, until, you know, until later contributors revived it uh, in early 2018. Um, so that kind of can go to show how a project can lapse without having the proper governance and support structure in place. Um, and so now they're actually gearing up for uh, V2, a code release coming in a couple months, which will be a really big major release for them, and that's being led by Autodesk. Our third project was OpenQ. And this um, was kind of a, a little bit of a different turn for the foundation, whereas the first two projects were very widely known and well adopted across the industry. OpenQ was a newer project. Um, so it had it joined in April of 2019, and it was actually just it was announced and released in, in January of 2019. So it was developed at ImageWorks. It was an internal render farm, which is for managing jobs and, and shops. And then um, in collaboration with Google Cloud, they developed it as open source, as OpenQ in January 2019. So before that, it had been used for years at ImageWorks, you know, on hundreds of shops. So it was definitely production proven, but it was new uh, as an open source project. Um, and so they've had a lot of releases over the past year um, and a lot of new contributors coming in from like Netflix, Microsoft, Amazon. Um, and they are working towards, they're currently still in the incubation stage and they're working towards graduation or graduating to adopted stage. Next up is OpenESR. So this was developed by um, Industrial Light and Magic, so ILM, in 1999. This was kind of the very first release of an open source project by a studio and really kick started the trend of open source projects for visual effects and animation. Um, so it's an image file format for high quality images, especially things that have a lot of contrast. Um, it's been used on every single ILM film, you know, for the past, probably since 1999. So all of the, especially all of the Star Wars films. Um, and so, and if you can see a couple images there. And uh, pretty much every single movie today uses it. Um, so it also won an Academy Technical Achievement Award. Um, and it's had a lot of contributors since it's joined the foundation, uh, Disney Animation, Imageworks, Epic Games, Weta, Pixar, you can read that. And they um, have a new release also coming this summer. Um, so our fifth project to join, which was last summer, um, was Open Timeline IO. So our goal originally had been to essentially get Open VDB, Open Color IO, and Open EXR. When the foundation launched, those were the three we knew we wanted to bring in. Um, there were a bunch of other projects as well, but that was kind of the goal for the first year, which we achieved. And plus, we brought in Open Q and Open Timeline IO, which is fantastic. So um, this one joined last summer. It's developed by Pixar, and it's an interchange format for um, editorial data, things like clip timing, tracks to pass all of that data throughout the pipeline for create for visual effects and animation. Um, and this is still in public beta. They just released their beta 12 in, this past March. Then open shading language is actually our newest project. We just adopted it um, in April, so a couple months ago. It was developed by ImageWorks and released in open source to open source in 2010. So it's been around for a while. It's the de facto standard shading language for VFX and animation. So um, almost all applications support it and, you know, it's got widespread use. Um, so they're still kind of getting ramped up and, you know, moving over 
repositories and everything, but we're very excited to have them on board. Um, you know, and this is actually the second project that we, that ImageWorks has contributed to the foundation, which kind of goes to show that they've seen a lot of benefit and seen the growth that the projects have had as part of the foundation um, to want to contribute a second one. And I think for what we're finding too is that the community of open source software developers within motion picture is fairly on the smaller side and you end up with a lot of people working across many projects. And so, you know, by being able to bring on more contributors, it kind of frees up a lot of the original maintainers who have been, you know, working on these projects and devoted that to them for years and kind of eases off a little bit of the burden as well. So how to contribute and get involved. There are many different ways you can get involved. Um, you know, you can, you know, submit testing, join our TSCs uh, for any of the projects. We have a meeting calendar on our website, um, as well as the TAC. All of the TAC meetings are open, and we encourage you to attend. I know it can sometimes seem intimidating, but even just joining and listening in or joining in on the mailing list, um, you know, we, one of the, a lot of the projects are in need of better documentation um, and technical writing or looking for feedback from users. Uh, and for test cases, so that's a way. Um, pretty much any project, if you say, hey, I want to get involved, I'll say, great, um, you know, and want to talk to you about what you can do or, you know, what you want to do. And so these are kind of our main mailing lists. Uh, we have a Slack channel at slack.aswf.io and GitHub. Um, Behind the screens is a new feature we launched last year where we highlight a lot of the software engineers um, in the industry. It's a QA and a on our blog. Um, so if you are currently uh, an, a user or contributor to open source software within VFX animation and want to be featured, please send me a note. Um, and then we've got our YouTube channel and Twitter as well. So coming up, we will have um, our open source days. So this is something we launched last year um, at, in, in, at the same time as SIGGRAPH, in conjunction with SIGGRAPH. Um, it was a full day of Birds of a Feather sessions for open source projects for VFX and animation. So we had our own projects, plus we had ACES, RES, MaterialX, all giving presentations. Um, and before where all the projects had been scattered throughout the week and it was hard for people to get to them, we wanted to host it all in one place to make it easy for developers and engineers to attend. Um, so this year we are going virtual. Uh, the dates that you see right there is of, as of earlier today actually looks like it will move a week later just because there will be another conference called DigiPro that same days as ours right now. Um, so the schedule hasn't been quite announced yet, but all of our projects will have sessions, you know, talking about their progress over the past year, uh, examples from production and what's to come on the roadmap. Um, and then we're also we'll have other projects joining us again like ACES and hopefully we hope to have like maybe USC or the VFX reference platform as well um, participate. So this will be free and open to anybody who wants to join. Um, so stay tuned for that and you can keep checking our website for info. And that is it. So I don't know if there are any questions. I don't see any apart from the earlier audio issues. Okay. Um, well, thank you all for attending. I encourage you to head over to our YouTube channel where you can actually view. Uh, and where you can actually view the video. And then if you have additional questions, I am on Slack. You can feel free to shoot me a note or to post in the um, open chat, uh, the open source project updates.